Hello everybody and welcome to Jeff the Pharmacist. It is an honor to have you here. So today I want to talk about glimepiride, brand name Amaryl. And this is a drug used to treat type 2 diabetes. It's in a class of drug called sulfonylureas. And I'm going to talk about um, how it works, uh, how it's taken, how, you know, like what does it what does it basically offer to the patient? How effective is it? Uh, some common side effects, and then just a little bit about pricing and how to save money uh, if uh, you have to pay cash for the drug or if your insurance copays are high. So as I said before, glimepiride is a sulfonylurea, and these drugs are basically what they basically do is they bind to the pancreatic beta cells. So your pancreas is what secretes insulin and what is what that's what kind of lowers your blood sugar after you've had a meal with carbohydrates or sugar in it. It does it in a way that is very uh, unresponsive to any kind of blood glucose changes. So there are drugs that I've talked about before called GLP-1 uh, mimetics or uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists. What these do is they also increase the amount of insulin coming from the pancreas, but they kind of respond, um, it's sort of responsive to how much blood glucose you have. But with a drug like glimepiride, or really all sulfonylureas, the drug will increase the amount of insulin coming from your pancreas, uh, whether or not you have already have low blood sugar. So the biggest side effect with the drug would be low blood sugar, and that really is um, the most common side effect. It's really the most common um, issue with diabetes drugs or diabetes regimens with insulin, uh, really with drugs to treat diabetes because what you're basically treating uh, with diabetes drugs is blood sugar. Um, you know, there are some things that the drug, like metformin kind of does some other things that are kind of cool, increases, uh, increases tissue sensitivity to insulin or it kind of blocks some of the carbohydrates coming through the gut. But in general, drug, drugs mostly kind of work on the blood, the amount of sugar in the blood or the amount of glucose in the blood. And so glimepiride kind of does it with a heavy hand. So that can cause um, hypoglycemia. So uh, just to ask you, what do you guys think is worse? hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. So hypo being low blood sugar, um, hyperglycemia being high blood sugar. So yeah, you're right. So low blood sugar is worse. So hypoglycemia, if it goes low enough, can be um, fatal, can cause coma, death. So it's there's basically a kind of a spectrum for hypoglycemia. If you're somebody without diabetes and you've, you've kind of started fasting, Especially if you're on a uh, diet that is high in carbs and high in sugar and stuff, your body's kind of used to having to deal with a lot of uh, sugar in the blood. If you were to fast, that kind of a shaky feeling that uh, you experience, that's kind of the beginning of a hypoglycemic kind of episode. If you don't have diabetes, it's not really dangerous. Uh, but if you, if you do have diabetes and you're taking diabetes drugs and you feel hypoglycemic and that gets worse, it can turn into irritability, mood changes, and if it gets even worse, um, coma and death. So it's a very serious side effect. Hypoglycemia is very common with all diabetes drugs. So does glimepiride work? And it, it actually does, it's, it's pretty effective. Um, if you, I'll show you this chart here, and this is monotherapy, so most people won't be, be on monotherapy, most people will be on, probably on metformin already, but um, it looks like it reduces A1C in a 20, in 20, in a 22 week trial, it reduced A1C by about one point. That's pretty good for diabetes drugs, especially for non-injectable drugs. Of course, the, uh, like I said, the big, Downside to it is hypoglycemia. So the, the average A1C decreases about one. So other issues with uh, glimepiride, um, there were incidences of hypersensitivity reactions after the drug left um, the uh, 
the drug trials. So hypersensitivity reactions are different from like an anaphylactic reaction. So anybody can become allergic to a drug, have hives, or have even go into anaphylactic shock. That's very rare, but it happens. You know, we all know somebody who has like a severe peanut allergy where their face will swell up. Uh, that can happen with drugs as well. Uh, hypersensitivity reactions are a little different. These are weird reactions that occur with drugs. Um, the name for them is uh, Steven Johnson syndrome. It's characterized by angioedema, which is swelling of the lips and the mouth. And um, Steven Johnson syndrome is really terrible. Um, I don't want to get into graphic detail with it. It's extremely rare, and it is a side effect of some drugs, um, not just glimepiride. And it's not a common one at all. It's extremely rare. Um, it was. You know, the drug had to be out in the community for a while before they even uh, learned about this. But it is something that is listed in the uh, package insert. And it is something that, um, you know, people should know about. I think, you know, hypoglycemia is a much bigger concern, much more likely. But uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome and angioedema are issues that are out there. Steven Johnson syndrome is also one of the six most messed up side effects that I talked about in one of my earlier videos. And it is pretty messed up. There's also some something can happen called hemolytic uh, anemia. That's where that's where the basically the blood blood cell counts go down and red blood cells are kind of killed. Um, so that occurs in somebody with uh, six GDP deficiency, so you probably wouldn't know if you had this unless you had some issue like this or if you had some kind of genetic testing. So that is an issue as well, which is ex extremely, extremely rare. And the kind of the last side effect I want to talk about is there was a trial with another drug that was also a sulfonylurea, which there was increased cardiac mortality, so that would be an increased rate of uh, stroke and heart attack um, that wasn't necessarily seen with glimepiride but it was uh, something that occurred with another sul sulfonylurea that was not marketed so it is kind of mentioned in because it is a that drug was also a sulfonylurea so I think the biggest kind of the biggest obviously the biggest sort of concern with glimepiride is hypoglycemia if you do have to pay cash for the drug, I, I do have a um, a prescription drug savings card, so don't pay cash for anything like straight up cash without at least testing the, the card, giving it to the pharmacist and seeing if that works. One other thing to consider is that insurance companies or prescription drug manager management companies, what they're doing is they're passing on more and more costs to the customer. So what we're seeing in pharmacy is that a lot of times that the actual copay is higher than uh, the, the cash price for it with a discount card. So that's something also to consider if your copay is high. Like if, if you were taking glimepiride and you had a 40 or $50 copay for it, uh, it the uh, prescription savings card would be cheaper. So I hope you all found this interesting. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. Um, it's an honor to have you watching. If you have any comments, just leave them in the comments section below. I've had some very colorful comments. Um, you know, I just talked about Stevens Johnson syndrome. Somebody left me a comment, which I thought was funny. He said I should wear a um, Grim Reaper hood and carry a scythe when I talk about side effects. Uh, I just want to throw these things out there. I know, I know a lot of times that uh, Healthcare professionals, they don't want to really go into, they don't want to scare the patients. Um, it's difficult to be nuanced about side effects sometimes because they're not all that, some of them are not all that common. Some are, um, but uh, the more serious ones are not, are usually not that common unless it's like a cancer drug or something. But for diabetes drugs, things like S. Stevens Johnson syndrome, angioedema or anemia they're not that common but it's good to be aware of these things i think that uh i think that patients can be um 
intelligent and nuanced about um, side effects and things, I think it's better that they're not left in the dark. So that's kind of why I'm I'm making these videos. So I hope you guys find this interesting. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks a lot.